Hello and welcome to lecture 19 of the course theory of computation. Uh, in this uh, rather short lecture, we will see uh, closure properties of context free languages. Right? So, in the previous couple of lectures we saw what context free languages are, we saw the definition, we saw examples, then we saw Chomsky normal form and then we saw the C by K algorithm. In this lecture, we will see some of the closure properties. So, in, uh, in lecture 16, uh, which is the first lecture where we saw context free languages, we already saw that context free languages are closed under the union. Right? So, in this uh, lecture, we will see couple of more uh, closure properties. Right? So, the first thing that we will see is that context free languages are closed under concatenation. So, let us try to recollect what concatenation was. So, uh, if L1 is a language and L2 is a language, the concatenation of L1 and L2, uh, which is defined uh, like here, right, is the set of all strings x, y, right, the concatenation of all strings x, y, where x is a string from L1 and y is a string from L2. Right. So, basically it is a concatenation, it is a set of all concatenations where the first string comes from L1 and the second string comes from L2. right. So, we want to show that uh, if L1 and, and, and L2 are context free la languages, then this uh, context free, this, this language that is defined here, the concatenation of L1 with L2, that is also context free. Uh, this turns out to be uh, somewhat straightforward. So, we proceed the normal way. So, if L1 and L2 are context free languages, so we may assume that L1 is generated by some context free grammar G1 and L2 is generated by some other context free grammar G2. right? And let S1 be the start variable of L, uh, G1 and S2 be the start variable of G2. right? So, all we need to do, uh, so we need to produce all the strings x, y where x comes from L1 and y comes from L2. So, which means x is generated by the context free grammar G1 and y is generated by the context free grammar G2. right? So, what all that we have to do is to create a new start variable s, right? create a new start variable s and have that s generate s1, s2. Right? So, add a rule where s yields s1, s2 and then along with that we add all the rules of the uh, grammar 1, right? we add all the rules of grammar 1 and then all the rules of grammar 2. Right? So, which means S gives S1, S2 and this S1 is a start variable for uh, grammar 1. So, we are, we are also adding all the rules of grammar 1. So, using those rules S1 will generate some string in L1 which is, which is generated by the grammar 1 and using the rules of G2 S2 will generate some string in L2. So, uh, as a result this will exactly generate S will exactly generate all the strings that are of the form x, y that x is from L1 and y is from L2. So, this is the context free grammar for this is the context free grammar G. So, context free grammar G that generates L1, L2. Right? So, that is how uh, context free languages are closed under concatenation. So, the next one is close closure under clean star. right? So, remember uh, clean star, uh, so given a language L1, the star of L1 right, also called the clean star is just strings uh, of the form x1, x2, xk, x1, x2, x1, x2, x3, x4 up to xk where each of these x 1s, right? so each x 1, x 2, each of these x i's are part of the language L, L 1. Right? So, each, so, basically it is a k strings from the same language one after the other, right? where k could be anything, k could be 0, k could be 1, k could be 2 and so on. So, you could have one string from the language, two strings from the language one after the other or three strings from the language one after the other after the other and so on. right? It could also be 0 strings, in which case uh, we get the empty string. right? So, suppose, uh, uh, so now we want to show that given L1 is a context free language, which means 
if L1 has a context free grammar G1 with the start variable S1, can we build a context free grammar for uh, the L1 star? Right? So, we will build a context free grammar for L1 star, we will call it G right? and with the new start variable. Okay? So, the new start variable is S and we add two new rules right? along, along with the rules of G1. Right? So, we, we do two new rules and also now the start variable is S uh, which is the start variable of the new grammar and not S1, S1 was the start variable of G1. So, now S is the new start variable. So, the first rule is that S gives S S1. So, S gives S S1. So, I am referring to this, this rule. So, now S gives S S1. Now, this S1 will generate some string in the, uh, in the language L1. And again this S, uh, so we may have uh, things like, we may again have a rule or again we may apply this s may be again giving s s1 right so which means i will get two strings from uh, l1 right and maybe let's say maybe let's say this s now we use a second rule which is s gives empty string so which means i i get s1 s1 so now i use in this manner now each of the s1s can generate some string from l1 uh, consequently we get uh, some like some x1 x x2 where both of x1 and x2 come from l1 right now we may we, we, we can also get sorry we can also get uh, the, this s to again get s s1 and then go to empty right in which case you get some string uh, or three strings from l1 one after the other after the other right we may also get uh, let we may also directly use the second rule where s gives empty string right which which gives us uh, the empty string which is also part of l1 star so that way uh, this construction gives us uh, a new grammar or a cfg for the language L1 star. So, this is how we get uh, uh, a context free grammar for the language L1 star. So, a, a, an exercise is to just uh, verify that these two uh, grammars indeed uh, generate the languages that they were supposed to generate. Right. Uh, let's so, now the natural question is, uh, so uh, in the case of regular languages, we saw that regular languages are closed under union, uh, intersection, complement, uh, uh, star operation and concatenation. Right? So, what about the context free languages? Is it, so we already saw union in the earlier lecture, right? lecture 16. Then now we are seeing uh, uh, concatenation and clean star. So, what about intersection? Right? What about complement? Right? So, the answer is that uh, uh, it is not close, close under intersection, it is also not close under complement. So, let us see why that is the case. Um, so, consider these two languages that I have written here, L1 is A power n, B power n, C power m. Okay? So, it is of the form A star, B star, C star, some A's followed by some B's followed by some C's, where the number of uh, A's and B's are the same, right? number of A's and B's are the same, that is L1. So, C is repeated m times, where m is different from n. And L2 is A power n, B power m, C power m, where number of B's and C's are the same, which is m, and A is repeated some other number of times. Right? So, n is different from m. Right? So, L1 has the same number of a's and b's, L2 has the same number of b's and c's. Right? And um, it is not that difficult. So, already we have seen other languages which are context free. So, one exercise is to show that L1 and L2 are context free. So, the L1 and L2 as written here are context free. It is not that difficult to show, you can try to show that. 
But let's see what happens when we take the intersection of these languages. So, L1 and L2 both are of both give us strings of the form uh, A star B star C star right. It is some A's followed by some C's followed by some, some C's both maintain this structure right. Now, L1 intersection L2 also means since both the languages maintain the structure L1 intersection L2 also maintains the structure. However, L1 consists of all the strings um, where the number of A's is equal to the number of B's and L2 consists of all the strings where the number of B's equal to number of C's. So, L1 intersection L2 will have to satisfy both meaning the number of A's must equal the number of B's and number of B's must equal the number of C's. So, L1 intersection L2 are this all the all, all the strings of the form A star B star C star where the number of A's B's and C's are all the same. So, in other words we get this language L1 intersection L2 is A power n B power n C power n right. And um, later in the uh, like maybe couple of lectures down the line we will see that uh, this A power n B power n C power n for the same n this is not a context free language right. So, this language is not context free right. So, which means context free languages are not closed under intersection right. So, this is something that we have not proved yet like we have we not even discussed how to show that something is uh, not context free right. So, the way we will show it is uh, we saw pumping lemma for regular languages. Similarly, we will see pumping lemma for context free languages. And using that we will be able to show that uh, this language is not context free. So, here we have two languages L1 and L2 which are which are both context free, but the intersection is not context free which means they are not closed under intersection. And because they are not closed under intersection this also implies that they are not closed under complement why is that? Uh, this is because of uh, De Morgan's law, right? So this says that uh, uh, A one complement, or sorry, maybe I'll just use L one instead. L one complement uh, union L two complement, and the whole complement. This is one of the De Morgan's law is L1 intersection L2 right. So, if context free languages are closed under complement then L1 complement would have been a comp context free language L2 complement would have been a context free language right. And the union uh, we already saw that context free languages are closed under union. So, the union also would be a context free language and by assumption the complement is again uh, context free. So, the the L1 complement union L2 complement the whole complement is also going to be context free which means L1 intersection L2 is context free right. So, if CFLs uh, were closed under complement by De Morgan's law it would imply that CFLs are closed under intersection because basically by combining union and complement you can get intersection. Right. So, if they were close we already know it is closed under union if they were closed under complement we would get complement under intersection. right we know this is not the case we know they are not closed under intersection this is not the case hence it follows that sorry it follows that CFLs are not closed 
and a sorry complement because if it was closed under complement it would imply that they were closed under intersection which we know is not the case right so uh, that's all that i had in this particular lecture so we we saw that we already we recall that cfls are closed under union we saw that it is closed under concatenation by making a grammar we saw that it's closed under star again by making grammar and we saw by an example that they are not closed under intersection context free language is not closed under intersection so by so here we took for granted that uh, this language right this this language that i am highlighting right now uh, maybe i'll use a right this language that i am highlighting right now uh, sorry this doesn't look nice maybe i'll use a different color for highlight Okay, maybe this language that I'm highlighting now, right now, this um, is assuming that this language is not context-free, right? So later we, in the course, maybe in three, four lectures down the line, we'll see that this is not context-free, and hence they are not closed under intersection. And by De Morgan's law, if it is closed under complement and union, it follows that it's closed under intersection. We know it's closed under union. So, if it is closed under complement, it implies that it is closed under intersection, which we know is not the case. Hence, it follows that context free languages are not closed under complement, right? So, not closed under complement. So, context free languages are not closed under complement and intersection, but are closed under the regular operations, which is union, concatenation, and start. Yeah, and that is all I have uh, for you in this lecture. Uh, see you in the next lecture.